Hi folks, welcome back to the series on static pressure fans, as they are called. Now, for this video, I'm taking into consideration some of the comments that I've been getting on the videos, and whilst I'm not able to address absolutely everything at the moment, what I do want to have a look at, for my own curiosity as much as anything, is to see how the fan's performance is affected when I lower the speed considerably. So, this is not a noise normalised test result, but running the fans at 1100 RPM instead of 1600 RPM makes them exceptionally quiet. For most people, that would be more than acceptable from a noise point of view. Now, when it comes to the tests, I'm doing the same thing again. I have run every fan on the airflow chamber to get a max pressure reading at 1100 RPM. And since I had everything set up, I'm also running the test where I compare the static pressure against the restriction to the airflow. In addition to that, I've run every fan through the same thermal test as before, using exactly the same setup. So it'll be interesting to see how these fans compare when they are much slower than in the original test. Now, this has taken a lot of time. Um, I really want to keep this as objective and transparent as possible. If you're appreciating this content, please like the video and leave a comment and consider subscribing if you would like to see more of the same. Thank you for watching and let's get on with the tests. So here are the maximum static pressure results compared to the previous graph. What I want to highlight here is that for a drop in fan speed of roughly 30%, the performance deficit is over 50% in some cases. Whilst this doesn't apply linearly to airflow, it will have a significant impact on heatsink performance, as we will see. Looking at the pressure versus airflow graph, we can see that there's quite a different picture this time, with a relatively even spread at the low end of the curve. However, it is worth pointing out that the resolution here is almost too small to measure, so it won't matter a great deal. This is the test with the Gentle Typhoon. Just finishing up, I've been running it now for a wee while. Uh, the intake temperature is inclined to go quite high when you run lower speed fans, and that's already almost 23 and a half degrees, and if we look over at the temperature, it is almost maxing out at 80 degrees on the third core there. So it's still within an acceptable limit, I would say, but already you're seeing how much performance you have to sacrifice by getting these fans nice and quiet. Now, of course, there is the option to do push-pull on a cooler without contributing too much to the noise, and maybe later we'll have a look at how that compares. But for the moment, I'm going to get on with the testing, because I've got a lot still to do, and we'll have a look at the results. Right, so that's me done with all of the fans at 1100 RPM. The SP120 was the last fan that I needed to test. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at the results because I aborted the test with this fan because it went over 85 degrees and I had previously decided that I wasn't going to let the temperature get any higher than 85. Now that doesn't mean that that's a bad temp for everybody, it's just a personal choice for myself. I'm going to be running a lot of tests on the CPU and I do want to prolong its life where possible. So I am going to keep the temperature away from 85. So as I just said, the SP120 didn't manage to complete the test, so I'm excluding it from the graph. As for the remaining fans, there's a clear distinction here that is quite interesting. Except for the P12, the fans that have performed best are the same group of fans from the previous test, 
The main difference this time being that they are much more tightly grouped together with less than one degree separating them. And if you omit the Noctua F12, the gap narrows to half of a degree, which in my opinion is a distinction not worth making. And this corroborates what I've been saying in response to some of the comments. As the fans get closer to 1000 RPM, the performance will generally start to level out with the weakest fans being left behind, as we see here. Okay, so that's a pretty good stage, I think, to have a little bit of a conversation about what's happening here. One thing that we can conclude from the results so far is that static pressure performance is not a reliable indicator of heatsink performance. Both the Gentle Typhoon and the Cougar Vortex will have something to say about that because the Gentle Typhoon in particular actually has quite poor static pressure performance but it's one of the leading fans on the heatsink. Now there are other things that I want to get into, and that's this matter of variables, because somebody had commented, my test results don't line up with other people's test results. And that's because that's not how test results work. Test results are going to be different if the variables are changed. I'm using a particular CPU at a specific frequency and voltage. I'm pairing the fans with a specific CPU cooler and I'm using the same stress testing software and also temperature monitoring software and hardware Pretty much every one of these variables is going to be different when somebody else does the same tests with the same fans So it comes as no surprise that their results might differ But there are things that we can conclude and um, for example conclusively the vortex is the best performing fan on the heatsink and the Delta is the best all-round fan when it comes to static pressure performance and heatsink performance. Now a little word about these two fans. This one is clearly a gaming PC fan. This, on the other hand, is an industrial equipment fan, but they both fill the same category. They're, they're both 120mm fans. and. They can both run slow and they can both run quiet and still provide excellent performance. Now, I do have a selection of CPU coolers. I also have another system. I've got a Ryzen system as well. But for the moment, I'm going to keep everything as it is on my test platform because there are some fans that I haven't tested yet that I would like to add to the test pool which will give us a larger sample size and it'll be really interesting to compare the likes of the Fantex T30 and maybe even this upcoming metal fan from AlphaCool. Once I've tested more fans, I will then look at seeing about testing these fans on a different heatsink or a different platform and we'll have a look at what happens to the results. It's been really good to have so much engagement uh, in this process and I'm looking forward to continuing with this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.